Good morning, everyone. A degoogled Android phone is probably the best option today for a smartphone that will respect your digital privacy and autonomy. But that raises the question, which of the various degoogled Android operating systems, which custom ROM do you want to run on your phone in order to get the best experience and the most privacy and autonomy? So in this video, I'm going to take a look at a couple of different options that I think are interesting and talk about what I think are the advantages and disadvantages of each one and talk about why one might be better than another one. So I'm going to look at five of them. We can see four of them here, Calyx, Lineage, EOS, and Graphene. I've got a bonus one in addition that we'll see a little later. But first, let's talk about why you would want to install a degoogled Android ROM on a phone. Why is that better than the sort of more common options? And the basic problem here is that with most smartphones, the operating system vendor has full control over the phone. For example, if you get yourself an Apple iPhone, Apple is going to use their power to prevent users from installing any unapproved apps, except in some special cases, mostly to do with developers. So if you have an app that isn't on the Apple App Store and want to share it with a friend who has an iPhone, in general, they just can't install it at all. And that's kind of horrifying. You should be able to run your own apps on your own phone. Google, on the other hand, has a slightly different story going on here. They'll let you install whatever apps you want on your own phone, as long as you click through the warning, but that's not too bad. But the whole goal that Google has in providing Android-based smartphones is advertising. And so they're gonna track pretty much everything that you do in order to build a digital dossier that they're going to use for targeted advertising. That's not the same problem as with Apple phones with their sort of walled garden lockdown ecosystem, but it's kind of horrifying in a different way that they're finding out everything about you and then sharing some of that information with their advertising partners. They're trying to like build a model of your brain so they can sell you the most stuff. The best solution for this would be to just run a normal desktop style Linux open source operating system. And there's a couple of attempts to do that. We have the Pine phone, I've got one of them here. And we have the Librem 5, which doesn't actually exist except for this one, as far as I can tell. But uh, even if you can get your hands on those devices, supply isn't great even for the Pine phone. The software isn't really there for sort of non technical users. Both of them are in a sort of development stage where they're great for software developers. They're great for sort of hardcore Linux enthusiasts, but they're not really ready even for traditional tech early adopters. That'll change, that'll change relatively quickly, but right now they're not quite the thing that you want to use for your everyday phone, unless you do, in which case you should go do that. Luckily, um, Google's Android operating system has a mostly open source core called the Android Open Source Project. That's right here. And you conceptually could come here, download the source code, build it yourself, and then install that on your phone if you have a compatible phone that doesn't have some weird bootloader locking going on. But they provide a completely functional operating system here. And the sort of especially great thing is that they don't include any of their proprietary uh, apps or libraries in the default Android open source project uh, distribution. So a bunch of open source projects based on AOSP distribute functional operating systems for various phones that don't have the Google spying or the Google automatic updates, which they could use as a universal backdoor that come in stock Android. So that's why we wanna do de-Googled Android or uh, Android open source project without Google apps and Google Play services libraries as the best option for a uh, secure, private, and user autonomy respecting smartphone in the end of 2021. The ecosystem for de-Googled Android is actually pretty good. There's an open source and free software app store called F-Droid that has a bunch of uh, free and open source apps in it that solve most problems that you need to have solved for a smartphone. And there's tools like Aurora Store that allow you to get proprietary apps that are normally only distributed through the Google Play Store onto a de-Googled smartphone 
even if you don't have the Google Play Store app itself installed. The user experience is not quite as smooth as just running stock Android, but it's good enough for everyday use for most users. Before we get into the actual operating system or ROM options that I want to talk about, I want to take a moment to talk about the concept of security. A lot of the custom ROMs, the Google custom Android ROMs that are available are focused on security as their design goal, but they have a concept of security that is a little bit different from the concept of security that I want to focus on when I'm selecting operating system to use or software to use. As far as I'm concerned, security for a digital device means that the owner of the device has exclusive control over that device. If the owner of the device wants it to do something, nobody else should be able to override that decision. And if the device is doing something that the owner doesn't like, the owner should be able to stop it from doing that. So for example, if you have a computer and somebody else is able to remotely connect to the computer and change your desktop wallpaper without your permission, that's a security failure. If someone can break into your computer and read your data without permission, that's a security failure. Unfortunately, when people are talking about security, not everybody shares this user-centric security concept that I've, I've outlined here. In some cases, people talk about security against the user. For example, with uh, DRM software that's supposed to prevent you from copying like streaming video that you're watching. Uh, from the perspective of Netflix, preventing you from making a copy of a streaming video is helping their security. But from a user-centric security perspective, that is harming the end user security. You're attacking their computer, hijacking it, and causing it to do something other than what they want. Unfortunately, when we look at these custom ROMs, the security models that they're focused on aren't quite the same as the one that I'm focused on, and so I'm going to be complaining about all of them for that reason. So to summarize the security thing, I think we need to trust the user, because that's the whole point. We are the user, so our security is having the thing do what we want. Now, that means we don't trust anyone else as much. We especially shouldn't trust the developers of our operating system or our apps, at least without some mechanisms in place to make them more trustworthy. Optimally, that would include stuff like reproducible builds, but there doesn't seem to be much push for that with Android. We definitely want to keep an eye out for automatic updates plus user accounts, because that's enough to build a universal backdoor and, set, and have the uh, developers send custom updates to specific people with malicious functionality. I can go into a lot more detail on traditional security questions like uh, file system encryption to prevent people from getting access to your data if the phone is stolen, but that's not really what I'm focused on when I'm evaluating software, and that's something that maybe I need to talk about more another time. All right, one last thing before we get into looking at the individual ROMs that I want to talk about, and that is device support. Probably your existing device is not supported. Uh, device support is a little bit better on Lineage OS than the other ones, but we're still talking about maybe 10 devices that are modern Android phones that you can install Lineage OS on. For the other ones, support is mostly limited to Google Pixel devices. So probably if you're installing a uh, de-Googled custom ROM on a phone, you're going to have to buy a new phone to do that. There are some good, relatively inexpensive phones available. For example, I have a Pixel 3a here that I'm going to install one of these ROMs on. Those are now available for uh, like a hundred bucks on eBay, which isn't too bad, but that's a thing to keep in mind. Now, if you're gonna buy a phone to install a custom ROM on, make sure that you get the exact model that it works on. This is a Pixel 3a bought directly from Google. This will work. If you get a Pixel 3a bought through Verizon, it won't work. Verizon locks the bootloaders on the phones they sell, and basically they're just shipping you a pre-bricked device. Another option for getting a phone with one of these custom ROMs on it is to buy a phone with it pre-installed. Most of the organizations that offer these ROMs sell those phones directly. If you're interested in doing that, I see no reason not to buy the phone directly from any of these organizations. But yeah, those are the options on getting a device. Unfortunately, um, some random phone that you got, especially from a US carrier, probably just won't work at all. The first custom ROM that I'm going to talk about is Lineage OS. As far as I'm concerned, this is sort of the baseline custom ROM that everything else should get compared to. I've been running this for years on my devices, and it's based on an older custom ROM called Cyanogen Mod that I've been running for years before that. This probably is the most popular custom ROM, and it's the custom ROM with the least weird behavior. 
Lineage OS is a boring, mature custom ROM. It provides an Android open source project-based operating system for more devices than any other custom ROM that I'm aware of, and it has minimum changes from stock Android. That means that there's possible functionality that could improve security or user control, like spoofing permissions, that's intentionally left out of this, this ROM. Now, Lineage OS can be run with or without Google Apps, but if you install Google Apps on it, that eliminates the benefit of degoogling that we're trying to get here. Lineage OS is pretty bare bones by default, but you can install things like MicroG for some Google Play Services API support without installing all of Google Apps and having Google spy on everything that you do, or you can install stuff like Magisk to get root. And that, although not supported by the Lineage OS team, works pretty well. The next ROM I want to talk about is EOS. This is a ROM that's intended to provide an alternative to having a Google-based Android device by providing a bunch of cloud services built in by default to the software that they have pre-installed. So they provide cloud email, cloud contacts, cloud storage, an office suite, and a bunch of the stuff that Google provides to Android devices, which is a trade-off. Do you trust Google or do you trust some small nonprofit in Europe? Now, the fact that they're in Europe is sort of important here. I've mentioned that we can't trust large American tech companies because the government is already getting all their data. And we can't trust small American tech companies because national security letters exist. But it may be that we can trust a small European organization a little bit better because laws like GDPR exist that protect privacy to some extent. I wouldn't rely on that too much, but it's worth keeping in mind. Now, what makes EOS even nicer is that the eCloud services can also be self-hosted. They provide a VPS image that looks like it's based on Docker that lets you run all of this stuff, mostly based on NextCloud, on your own server. And if you're willing to do that, then this might be the best option of all of these things. EOS doesn't include Google Apps or Google Play services, but it does include MicroG, so apps that require Google APIs can run without breaking too badly at the cost of allowing those apps to contact Google servers and leak some data to them. Most significantly, that includes information about notifications. Next up is Calyx OS. This is a AOSP-based ROM that provides a bunch of sane defaults and a bunch of applications installed by default so that you get a sort of reasonable out-of-the-box experience. It doesn't try to provide cloud services the way EOS does, and that's potentially an advantage because it means we've finally gotten away from having to worry about universal backdoors. You don't have to log in to a Calyx OS account, and so they can't ship a custom update to you with malicious features. As with any attempt to provide sane defaults and a good out-of-the-box experience for semi-technical users, there's a bunch of choices in Calyx OS that I don't necessarily agree with. For example, they want to enable verified boot, so you have more trouble installing a sort of modified version of the operating system. They disable local root. The result is that they basically have the same security model as stock, stock Android. They trust the Calyx developers, but don't completely trust the user. They provide MicroG, which is a trade-off. I'm also not a fan of them bu bundling the Signal Messenger by default. That is a kind of open source app that uses proprietary servers. Not a huge fan, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. And overall, the thing that they've built with Calyx OS is pretty good. Uh, the main disadvantage of disabling root is that it prevents automatic updates from F-Droid and the uh, Aurora store, but they've explicitly enabled those things. So unless you have some reason to actually want to use root on a device, Calyx might be pretty good. The last of the commonly recommended ROMs that I want to talk about is Graphene OS. And Graphene OS is a lot like Kalos OS except they're trying to be a little bit more extreme on their security focus. First, they don't include MicroG. As far as I'm concerned, that's probably a good thing because you don't necessarily want to be connecting to Google servers, but it's the trade-off of then there are some apps that don't work. A more obnoxious thing that they do is they disable root, but then don't allow F-Droid back background updates. That means that if you install apps through F-Droid, you have to be constantly manually updating them and for me, that is a, uh, a deal breaker. I have no interest in having a custom ROM that can't background update software. 
If you're interested in only having a couple of apps installed and you really like the security model of trusting the operating system vendor, but not trusting anyone else, including yourself, then Graphene OS is probably something worth considering. The last ROM that I want to talk about is this thing called Rattlesnake OS, which I discovered while looking around for popular ROMs. And this isn't a commonly recommended ROM because it's not really, it's not really a ROM. It's a set of tools for building your own ROMs. And that probably gives you a lot of flexibility as far as controlling exactly what your ROM does, exactly when updates happen, etc. But the downside is that you have to be able to have a Amazon Cloud account and be prepared to configure and spin up Amazon Cloud instances to run this build process. The build process for Android is pretty slow. They say that even with the automatically spawned and, uh, Amazon Cloud servers that they're using, it takes seven or eight hours to do a complete build. But if you're prepared to get into this level of technical complexity, this is probably the most powerful of these options. And if you're trying to do something like build secure, um, secure phones for an organization, like if you work for a nonprofit and want to hand out uh, de-Googled Android devices to your users, then this is certainly a thing that's worth looking at. Probably for me, manually setting up phones based on something like Lineage is an easier thing to do than going to all the effort of config configuring Rattlesnake OS just for myself and maybe some family members that I'm helping do de-Googled phones, but Rattlesnake is still super cool looking. So now that we've looked at all these options, I think the pattern in this sort of video is that I now need to recommend something. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I'm actually gonna recommend most of these things. Here's my recommendation. If you like the idea of the cloud services from EOS, or especially if you wanna self-host the EOS stuff, then I recommend trying out EOS. If you want the simplest option, and just wanna get de-Googled Android onto your phone with the ability to access the open source ecosystem, as well as the ability, if necessary, to still install sort of app store apps, then what I recommend is Calyx OS. My complaints about th things like Signal pre-installed pre are pretty easy to ignore. I bet you can even uninstall it. And Calyx provides MicroG and no excess nonsense like the uh, eFoundation um, cloud services. So it looks like a good compromise position. If you have some technical expertise and can take advantage of having root on a device, then I recommend installing Lineage OS and then rooting it. All these other options sort of try to prevent you from rooting your device, which is obnoxious. And so Lineage is still the only reasonable option if you're interested in stuff like being able to take a full file system back up without having the operating system get in your way. Graphene OS seems strictly worse than just building your own thing with Lineage OS, so I don't see any reason to recommend that. And uh, Rattlesnake OS looks awesome. So if that looks awesome to you, definitely try that out. That's all I'm going to say for today. Go ahead and check in the description below for a link to the blog post. Subscribe to my RSS and have a wonderful rest of your day.